people that have got a bit of art, people that have got a bit of passion. People who are from every walk of life come through our doors. It's there to help very vulnerable people, people who have just not had a very good life. Young people come to this building with lots of different problems, problems that are out of their control. Homelessness, petty crimes, drugs, drink, it all goes together. And if we can get them down here and get them engaged, it might just break that cycle and it might help to change them. It's a unique place. It gives you a good feeling when you see someone who's on a one-way street to nowhere and they manage to bounce back. Once you get focus in life, everything becomes clearer. The alcoholic who fights the devil every day. The drug addict who fights hell's cravings. The bullied who fight to survive the mental, physical and social abuse they dare not speak of. The abused child who fights to cling to a childhood that has long disappeared. The homeless who fight the cold, hunger and loneliness of the concrete doorway they now call home. Those who fight against prejudice and racism. The lady who fights for the courage to leave the punches that have become part of her life. The depressed who need friends to fight for them while needing love, support and understanding. It is time to realise that we are all fighters. Let's take a walk in Jack's shoes. You can see there's good people wanting to come through. I have seen a lot of people change down here. This is important because there's nothing else like this in the city. Do you remember when I first came through the doors? I do remember when you first came through the doors, yeah. You were terrible. You're the worst person I'd ever met in my life. You didn't want to do anything. You didn't want to train. You sat down all day. What was it you used to say? Somewhat way, what was it you used to say? Oh, it's like you. Won't dare. Remember? I'm Jade. A few years ago, after being excluded from mainstream school, I was referred down here to the Jack Crane Foundation. Coming here made me feel believed in. I have changed a lot as a person. I have more confidence and I even give up some of my time now to volunteer. When they asked me to get involved in making a film about the place that helped turn my life around, I jumped at the chance. I first came down when I was about 14. I wasn't very well behaved. No normal main street school would have me. I wasn't the only troublesome person in Vermont and there was loads. And we all used to just cause trouble, not listen. People who, like yourself, who come in and don't really want to do anything and, you know, don't want to work, but over time and patience, couldn't do maths, that's where most of my problems came. And like last year I found out I've got dyslexia, but they didn't notice that. What changes have I seen in you? You were the laziest person I ever met in my life when I first met you. Uh, and it didn't take very long, granted, for you to turn around. Look at you now, you're an independent young woman. You're out, you've got a job. Even though it's four years and I don't have to help or support me, they're still always here for you. Either the light, they highlighted everything you was good at and helped you excel in that, rather than making you do all the stuff you couldn't do. They're all different in their own way, they all approach you differently, but like deep down they all care about you, so they've all got that in common. I think when you're that age you need a role model, don't you? But if you don't feel believed in, you don't think you can do it, can you? My attitude's changed, and I always thought like ambitions were dreams, like you'd never get them. But like they made me realise here that you can achieve them. This is Russ, he's a trustee at the Jack Crane Foundation, a place inspired by one very special man and built on his values. It's more than just a boxing club, it's about a place at the heart of the community, fighting for some of the most vulnerable people in society. The Jack Crane Foundation, it's hard to describe because we offer so much. We're trying to get as much under one roof to offer to anybody of all ages, no matter what the background is, it's just open to everyone. We believe in giving everyone a second chance. I'll do 40, 50 hours a week. I do it for the love because this place does mean a lot to me. We're not just a boxing club. We open up in the morning, half past six, three mornings a week to the Salvation Army. They bring half a dozen to a dozen homeless down, homelessness, petty crimes, drugs, drink, it all goes together. And if we can get them down here and get them engaged in some fitness, it might just break that cycle and it might help to change them, give them a sense of well-being, make them feel better about themselves and the area, stop committing crime. So it's having a knock-on effect, not just 
for us and them, but in the local area. That's how it just be, keep going. At half past nine we open as an alternative learning provision. We offer GCSEs, Duke of Edinburgh's, ASDAN, we're sort of known as a last chance saloon. They are the highest risk kids around York. We take them under our wing. We are the last chance for them. It's all about you, it's about the effort you put in. It works down here because the staff, the staff have been through the system, so the kids have respect for that. I came through the education programme and it really changed my life. Let's meet some of the characters. I love making a difference and it's nice to see them when they come through the doors for the first time and when they leave for the last time there is a big big difference in these people. During my time down here I've seen lots of people change, I mean I'm speaking to somebody now that changed, you know so there we go there's one change from a few years ago as you well know, young people come to this building with lots of different problems, problems that are out of their control. What? They might have some issue with anger, whatever, and this place is something that they can channel that anger and they go into society with a bigger and better outlook on life. But it works, it works, it works. Some of them, they're not bad kids. Nine times out of ten, they're just misunderstood and a classroom environment doesn't suit them. We do more hands-on stuff and physical activity, physical exercise, shoulder to cry on, nurse, listening to them and just being there for them when they, when they need you. I run the main day-to-day -day things with the kids in the gym. All the fitness work, all the cardio, keeping them under control. Stopping from turning out really bad. Young people, especially vulnerable young people, are here to help out kids that haven't really got anywhere else to go. I make sure every young person has a timetable and every young person are working with so many different agencies. The children's home, the police, social workers, youth offending team, they're very vulnerable. Jack Crane Foundation helps lots of troubled young people, but does it really change their lives? Let's meet Kyle. Kyle Billsborough, seeing the change in that kid. When I first met Kyle, I couldn't get two words out of him. He was always had his hood up, and we always have a laugh now about how he was like the Kevin and Perry character with his hood up. He can't be bothered to do certain things. When I met him, he was going nowhere. Jail, that's where he was headed. Well, it all changed because, like, after I come down for a few weeks, like, I realised that the work normal teachers were like, it's real people. Try and bring out the best in you, yeah, not focus on your bad points, but all your good points. Try and bring them out, encourage you to do things. The difference in him now is unbelievable. He's a totally different person, confident, special person, you know, to change his life around from what he was. Oh man, it, you know, it's like winning the lottery. You know, from what he's doing now, he's a chef and he's got ambition and he's got a kid and he's going somewhere, you know what I'm saying? And to see them getting on and doing well, oh, it's like winning the lottery, you know what I'm saying? It's the best feeling you can ever have. It's like a proper ultimate high. Jack Ryan Foundation has changed me as a person. It's made me a better person. Well now, because Jack Ryan Foundation have helped me, I've got a job, which I've been with nearly a year now. I've got a nice little girl, she's lovely. I've got my own flat. I don't think I've done it, like, if it didn't help me out, because I'd still be stopping on my own sofa and smoking weed still, just not making much of myself, really. He was sort of going down a dead-end street, going nowhere, and then to turn his life around, all credit to him. He's here 50, 60 hours a week. He's gone from being a very timid bloke to, to someone now that can think for himself. I'm proud of him, and the, the whole team are glad to have him on board, so if he carries on the way he is, he'll, he'll, be, a, he'll be a star. He's got a very good future. Once you get focus in life, everything becomes clearer. In 2004, the charity was founded, but who was Jack Rain and why is the place named after him? I went with Russ to find out where the legacy began. So, Jade, this is where it all started. That's the old schoolhouse where Jack and Inga used to work. We are what Jack used to do. This, as far as I know, used to be where the kids lived. These kids, they've done a lot of bad things, a lot of them. Jack used to discipline them through boxing. He used that as a way to draw out the inner them and try and steer them away from the bad things they've done. He earned a lot of respect by the way that he dealt with the kids. They looked up to him as a mentor. He got his message across. He was a very humble person. He didn't want to take any gratitude or anything for what he did. The boxing was used to mentally focus on, I suppose, to get some stability in the life. Jack and Inga played out their mum and dad role and a lot of these kids didn't have role models or didn't have parents. Seeing 
the place, the building, it just fits all the pieces of the jigsaw together. Jack Rain was a coach I met 25 years ago and he was a boxing coach at the club where I used to box. When I stopped boxing, I wanted to get into coaching because of watching Jack. What I tried to do is keep values what Jack had and pass them on to, to people. Maybe not just in a boxing sense, but your values as a person. Jack Rain, he just loved helping children. They were just, hadn't had a good life. He was a good role model to look up to and to learn, to learn from. Jack Crane's kindness has inspired so much of what the Foundation does today. Russ went to meet Paul, a man who has been looked after by Jack. I bumped into uh, Lewis the other day and um, he was telling me about um, Jack passing away. I didn't realise about that. The end of last year, three, four days before his death, he actually agreed to have the charity named after him. How did you get to know Jack and Inga? My first encounters with Jack and Inga, crumbs. 19th of October 1981, 2pm, I arrived at um, Castle Howard. My past life, it's always been in and out of care, 30 odd different kids' homes, 20 odd foster parents, and it's always been picked up and dumped all the time, and nobody in the country could take me anymore. So I ended up at the last place, which was, you know, Castle Howard. I was only 10 years old. It was just typical life, you know, at that stage, you know, from one place to another. It was like a last chance for you, which is what we very much are with the kids that we work with today. If you don't mind me asking, what had you done? Why had you been pushed from pillar to post? Basically, 18 months old, my mother ran away, basically. So I was in care all my life. I was just basically put from one foster home to another foster home to another care home. You just sort of like get used to the people Pull, and then next minute you sort of like lose the bond and you lose that you know that that faith in it some places were really nasty you got smacked and punished cleaning on your hands and knees turned me into a vicious person Castle Howard when I first went there and I went into uh, the IC unit that's when I first met Inga the person I was at that time Inga told me to do something and I swore at her and ran away hid underneath the bed and I can always remember this because I was shocked because it was the only person really ever to sort of like realise that instead of being harsh, she realised that it wasn't that I needed. That's when Jack and Inga basically built my life up for me because he, I knew nothing about my life. I never knew my mum, never knew my dad. I didn't even know I had brothers and sisters. I remember one summer, I think I was about 13, Jack on his own back went out and literally got all my files, and, you know, from all social services from around the country and everything and I'll tell you what, I was amazed to see four to five folders and they were about that thick each and this was all about me, all the different kids' homes I was in and everything and you read all these to me. I was a family of nine but I was the only one that was put into care and not the others and that really hurt me, you know, why me? It wasn't my fault the way I was, Jack and Inga would never give up. They gave more loving then, you know, harshness, you know what I mean? They were definitely the positive role models in your life. They actually found my parents. I couldn't bond with my parents for the simple reason this, they abandoned me. Where Jack and Inga, they basically found me. You know, I was like a, a lost puppy. And Jack and Inga found this poor lost puppy and took it under and left it underneath the wing. If Jack and Inga hadn't come into your life, if you hadn't been introduced, sent to Castle Howard, where do you think you would be today? Jail probably be dead. I was an uncontrollable 10 year old, 11 year old, you know. All I ever knew was abuse. The only crime I committed was basically being born. Jack and Inga never failed on me, never. They always gave for what I needed. They took me from a wild animal and tamed me in a way. I can see how these people changed your lives, how Jack and Inga and the reform tree helped you. He had a goal and, and, and if his goal was to do something, he would go at it and go at it and go at it until that goal was complete. They knew of me having a really bad time in different places, the cruelty I was given, and they changed that cruelty into love and affection. It wasn't my fault the way I was brought up. It was just the way society brought me up. I described Jack as a caring, understanding, lovable, you know, chap. If you had something that you love so much, that would be Jack. We became a family, you know. Jack and Inga's sort of legacy, what they were doing at Castle Howard, it carries on and in what we're doing today. We're open to anyone come down and be part of what we are today. I'd like to come and see the place, yeah, the place you know, and have an Aussie around with it. It makes you realise what we're doing. It's in until you do things like this and it brings it to the forefront of your mind 
that you do realise what a difference you're actually making. So Jack Rain is truly a foundation for the people. It's there for everybody, supporting the heart of the community. My message would be, if anybody is thinking of, of sort of closing this place down, they would need to come down and have a look themselves really and just see all the positive things that are going on here. We're not particularly bothered where they've come from, who the mum and dad is, how much cash have they got, what trainers they wear, you know, it doesn't matter. They can just come down here and access the place and get off the street. Kids who would end up stealing cars and out drinking, smoking, taking drugs at six o'clock on a night, stood on a street corner outside your house where you don't want them, are in this gym. You know, if nothing else, that's got to be worth a little bit of your time and money, hasn't it? Well, there's been a couple of people that have been highlighted as being into criminal activity and they've been on police radar. Since coming down here, they've not even been to police attention. Well, this place is inspiring. It brings a, a lot of good things out in a, in a lot of people that probably wouldn't have had the chance. This can change lives. I think it's massive, mate, to be honest with you. It's a brilliant resource for every, all members of the community. It's, everyone's so welcome here. It's fantastic. It's, it really is fantastic and it gives you a good feeling when you see someone who's on a, a one-way street to nowhere and if Kyle can do it, you know, other people should look at themselves and think, well, I can do it and believe in myself. It's a lot more than a boxing club. Boxing club is only a tiny part of what we do. With the education, the work programmes we have, the boxing club's only like 10% of what we are now. Since I've come down, I'm coming probably four, five times a week. It's got me to a better standing up, it'll get me further in the competition, so. It's good it's not just a boxing club, because then you get different people coming down for different reasons, and it helps other people in community and things like that. The impact of getting uh, just eight or nine lads that are drinking drugs Criminal activity one is enough, but to get eight or nine down, the impact of them eight and nine going back to their other way of life would be a tremendous impact. And that's just that one session on the morning. It's not just us on the morning, it's continuing from half six till half eight, nine o'clock at night. We're helping them, give them aspirations and some meaning in life to move on and do something. We can only do it if we survive and keep going. We need your help to carry on doing that. Without it, a lot of the kids would just to just get lost, totally lost without this place. York is one of those cities where everybody thinks everything's lovely. What people don't realise is that we have lots of problems in York. If this building no longer existed, if these people no longer existed, the crime rate would rise. That I guarantee you, okay? Because these kids wouldn't have anywhere to access because they wouldn't be engaged with anybody. It's all about engaging with people. The Jack Rain Community Foundation is here for everybody in the city. Whether you're underprivileged, you have an alcohol or drug problem, a young vulnerable person, people that are out of work, and some of the most severe cases of abuse in the city, right across the board. The alcoholic who fights the devil every day. The drug addict who fights hell's cravings. The bullied who fight to survive the mental, physical and social abuse they dare not speak of. The abused child who fights to cling to a childhood that has long disappeared. The homeless who fight the cold, hunger and loneliness of the concrete doorway they now call home. Those who fight against prejudice and racism. The lady who fights for the courage to leave the punches that have become part of her life. The depressed who need friends to fight for them while needing love, support and understanding. It is time to realise that we are all fighters. To all those people who don't know when I was 14, look at me now. I don't want people to end up in prison. I don't want people to end up in young offenders institutions. Increase the quality of their lives. It is an amazing place. 